most of your listings are going to come out of lead follow-up. They're not ready today. Agents are dropping the ball. It's gold. It took five attempts before an actual sale was made. And we are back. Welcome back to the Listing Agent Show with me today. Of course, I've got my co-host, Ren Jones from Vulcan 7. Ren, welcome back, my friend. Hi, everybody. So we're talking about lead follow-up. Probably one of the biggest areas, Ren, where agents are dropping the ball, leaving hundreds of thousands, if not millions of dollars on the table every year because a lack of lead follow-up. And so I hope today, over the next few minutes, we give our audience some actionable things to go back and implement in their business. And so I'm going to jump right into it. And I'm going to I'm going to refer to a study that was done by a company called IRC Sales Solutions. And I will link to the study, you guys, beneath this video in the description. And the first thing the study found was that 95% of the prospects in which we talk to are not ready to make a decision on the first call, on the first attempt. What they found was that 95% of all sales that were converted and a commission was given was due to lead follow-up. And so my rule when I'm coaching a, a real estate agent, this is the same thing. This is directly in line with what we see. When we're making first contacts with an expired listing, a for sale by owner, the, the fact is you are probably only going to set an appointment on the first time you talk to them like 5%, tops 10%. I mean, top, 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 top. I mean, most of the time, most of your appointments and most of your listings are gonna come out of lead follow-up. So that was what was really interesting in the study. And it makes all the sense in the world in our business. And I'm sure that's probably what you've found over the years. You know what I mean? The notion that you can get, you know, you can call somebody one time out of the blue. I mean, it happens. It happens 5% of the time. I know lead follow-up's a big piece. I mean, it's gold. And that is, that's where you can beat your competition because they're so disorganized. They don't do it. They're going for the, they're going for the one out of 20 and then they call it a day. Exactly you, right. You go back and get the other 80% or so, you know, especially Thanksgiving and Christmas, you know, how many times they're not ready today. Yeah, that's exactly right. That's exactly right. January. Yes. So this was what was even more interesting and this is what we find to absolutely be true. So when we look at like the top, top, top 1% of listing agents, I'm talking about the top, Ren, you know most of them. This is directly in line with the study that this company did. And here's what they found. They found that essentially 90, so 95% of the people aren't ready to make a decision today. Okay, we get that. However, here's what they also found that 80%, here's the number, here's the actual stat, 80% of all converted leads into a closing happened on the, the, the uh, five or more contacts. 80% took five or more conversations that the actual study was between five and 12. So that was the sweet spot. It took five attempts, five conversations, five you know, uh, interactions with the prospect before an actual sale was made. 10% was made after the fourth contact. So between four and five, 10% was made. 5% was made in three, 3% on two. And again, only the, the smallest fraction was made on the first attempt or the first dial. So and you've so, got to run this like a business. Yeah, absolutely. Brandon, this has got to be run like a business. You've got to be organized and you need to. And if you're talking to a lot of people, you've got to have something or some method that tells you that this is the fourth call and what this is about. That's exactly right. And now we're going to get, what, we're going to, we're going to unpack all What do you, what do you say that? to them? Because we run into this everywhere. Sure. What do you say to people when they're like, when they're like, okay, now I'm getting ready to make the next one. Let me study the notes for the next 12 minutes. No. Like, what do you, yeah. What just, do you do just, there? just make the dial and through action, through the conversation, like actually doing the work comes the result, right? Preparing, like 
imperfect action is always better, always better than perfection. You I know, bring per- that up because it's a major downfall. You uh, you Big can't time. spend you can't spend eight minutes reading the notes and then calling, or you'll you'll never get anywhere. It the, may need, yeah. The thing I say, Ren, all the time is, and I didn't make this up, but perfection is just procrastination in disguise. Period. So. Right. People are that are always trying to get our call reluctance, you know, absolutely. It's, it's absolutely. so much, it's, it's a lot more comfortable to sit there with your coffee, sipping and reading, reading a little novel of notes that you put in. <laughs> exactly. Right. So, so here's the thing. If we know, and this has been my experience and every top producer would agree, majority of our results come through lead follow-up. Everybody would agree with that. Here's what's interesting. Here's what the study showed. That 44%, and I find this with agents that I first start coaching, and this is a huge area of opportunity for them and every agent that's going to watch this, 44% only make one attempt. So they get there for sale by owners and they're expired from Vulcan 7 in the morning, and almost half only try to call the prospect one time. And this is where most agents are leaving a lot of meat on the bone. And so what I like to coach agents on, because we know what the data suggests, we know what the science is, it takes four, five, six attempts to get 80% of the conversion. So we want our agents in our coaching program to at least minimum attempt all new leads three times, but we really like to see that five times on day one. So this can be a combination of phone calling, text messaging, emailing, knocking the door, sending them messages on Facebook or Instagram, but three to five attempts for every new lead on day one, minimum, if you're going to get any type of conversion. So, uh, so where's the sweet spot? Cause we had, and I ran into this with our, in our own company, yeah. somebody that had talked to them 27 times and signed them up like, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> yeah. Well, Wait, and, and we, we, we don't want to go the other extreme either. No, <laughs> no, absolutely not. There's a point of diminishing returns, right? And so because they're not being intentional with the conversation, and we're going to talk all about that actually today. It's a really okay. good point. So th- those just, I just give that framework so people can understand like the severity of lead generate, uh, of lead, of, of lead follow-up so much so I I go as far as saying this, that if an agent is not going to follow up, they have no follow-up system, they have no plan on following up, they're just going to attempt people one time, they might as well not even pick up the phone. They might as well not even prospect. It is that important. If you're just going to call everybody once, like good luck making it in sales. Like that's going to be a very, very uh, low paying return. Would you agree with that? And you and you're saying 44 percent do that, which means 56 percent will at least go to a second call. That's terrible. So oh, really, terrible. There's, wait, there's a lot of room for. Uh, maybe you could just take the the leftovers from those 44 percent. Well, here's the thing. This to your point, the study broke all of that down. What they found was that only. So we talked about the sweet spot. That five contact is the sweet spot, okay? So all of my strategies, tactics, all everything I teach and I coach has to do around with this magic number five. And we'll talk more about that in a second. But here's what they found. The study took this magic number of five and they found that only 8% of salespeople follow up five, at least five times, only 8%. So 92% of your competition is not staying in there long enough to reap the largest return when it comes to lead conversion and specifically contact to listing appointment set. So when I say conversion for everybody watching, giving you contacts, I'm talking about contact to lead appointment uh, to listing appointment set. That's the conversion. So if you're only calling people once or twice, you can now understand why you're not getting as many listing appointments as you could had you up those attempts and had a system around lead follow-up. Goodness, there's so much gold. There is yeah. so much gold. It reminds me of calling old expires. It always shocked me how oh, you know, after, yeah. three, after three weeks, nobody was talking to them. Nobody. 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 And it, it was just low-hanging fruit. Yeah. And, and, and that is really from a tactical piece of advice with expires and for sale by owners specifically, 
Yeah. Our, our biggest, biggest, like where all of my coaching clients and where I get all my listings is always between weeks four and six, all ways, because all the competition is done calling because they're all want instant gratification. And we're not talking about three and a half years of follow-up. We're talking about four to six weeks is the sweet spot because that gets you, that allows you to have that four, five, six uh, uh, attempts or interactions or conversations. And that's where 80, 90% of the listings are being taken. I just have to believe a lot of this is a lack of structure in people's business where big yeah, time. And, and you know, this, they, they're like, well, I, you know, I've, I've got, I've got nine houses under contract and I'm too busy to, to follow up. And so they stop, they just stop and they work their pendings, get them all done. And then they, then they Start have all over again. well for a while and they go back in it. So, yeah. And, and we're going to give some people some tactical advice to get organized. So that's all the numbers. So for all the analyticals out there, there you go. You guys love that part of the show. Now let's move on to the next biggest point when it comes to lead follow-up, which is how are you defining a lead? Okay. You and I both were talking off air. Too many people are in the lead business. They should be in the appointment listing taken business. And so what they do, Ren, is because they have such a lack of commitment to daily prospecting, they'll have two contacts. They don't go very well, but because they want to trick themselves in believing that they were productive, they force those two contacts into their follow-up system when those people never qualified to be in there ever. They're forcing leads into the database that are just really, you said it, you said it best. These are taking place of the real opportunities that people can have when they clean up the definition of what a lead is and what a lead is not. And so here are the five criterias that I train that I coach to. Number one, and this is what you guys all have to follow if you are going to have success with the right people going into the database and you're not taking your time, energy, and effort on a bunch of people that you're never going to meet with. So number one, they must have clear motivation. They cannot be just testing the market. If I get some ridiculous price, it has to be clear motivation. To give you an example, they have a job transfer. They're getting a divorce. They're getting, they're downsizing. They're upsizing. They had a baby, some type of life change, clear motivation. You want to add anything to point number one, Ren? Yeah. A lot of times it's in two parts. Uh, they have to move. And then the second question is, do they need to move pretty quickly? That's right. Yeah, because it. sometimes it's a yes and a no. Well, we want to we want to retire in Orlando. Uh, we're definitely moving to Orlando. All our friends are down there. Well, when do you want to do this? Well, somewhere in the next five years. Okay. Well, that so you have to look at both components. Well, what a great transition. We didn't even plan that. Number two on the list is a specific time frame. Okay. A specific time frame. <laughs> oh, really? So, there we go. <laughs> there we go. So, we so go. one is clear motivation. <laughs> Two is clear time frame. And so in my world, I'm, I'm, channel I'm channeling Brandon. That's right. That's your inner Yoda. <laughs> so, so time frame for us, we define, we, we want to work any seller who tells us specifically that they are looking to sell at a specific time frame within the next 12 months. As long as it's within 12 months, that's game time for us. To your point, if it's 5, 10, 20 years down the road, that's not going into our into our wheelhouse yet. No, they'll talk to 87 agents between now and then. <laughs> exactly. So we want anybody who tells us, you know, next week, tomorrow, next month, this spring, this summer, this winter, after the school year, we want a specific time frame within now and the next 12 months, okay? That's what we need to, to consider a lead. Now, there's different types of leads. I'm going to get into that in just a second. Number three, they tell you specifically that they are not committed to another agent and they will interview you. That's key. So number three, they don't have mom or their brother who they're going to list it with, who they're obligated to do business with. They have no agent and they told you, yes, when the time is right, Ren, We'd be happy to meet with you. We'd be happy to interview you. You sound like a great guy. We'd love the opportunity to meet with you when the time is right. Okay, cool. That's number three. Number four on the list. This is so big. This is the seller-driven follow-up. Here's what this means. So the seller must tell the agent, Ren, this is when we want to hear from you again. 
because here's what I see too, too often is the seller because this, the prospect, this is deep, deep sales training. So hopefully people get value out of this. Here's what happens. If the, if the agent says, well, Hey, great talking with you. You know, I'll, I'll stay in touch with you and I'll follow up with you in the future. That is exactly what the prospect is hoping to hear because that triggers that the phone call is almost over, that the nightmare is almost over, that I don't have to deal with this annoying realtor anymore. So we can't do that. We have to use the Socratic method to get the seller to tell us, this is called a micro commitment in reverse selling. The seller tells us when we should follow up specifically. We need to get them, and this is all backed by science. When the prospect verbalizes a commitment into existence, the likelihood, Ren, of them sticking to that commitment goes up by 92%. So when people say they're going to do something, they're a lot light, more likely to do it than if they never verbalize it. So Agent A says, I'll, I'll touch base with you. And the prospect's like, oh, thank God, this call's over. Boom, never gonna hear from them again. Agent two says, Ren, listen, great conversation. I understand you're looking to sell this spring. When would it make sense for you and I to have our next conversation? When would it make sense for you and I to have a quick cup of coffee? When would it make sense for you and I to X, Y, and Z? I have to pull from the prospect and get the prospect to commit verbally when that next follow-up is. That's number four. And then number five is they gave you a valid email address. So we, we get all five of those. This is how agents that I coach, that's how we define a lead. So it is clear. It's very objective. There is no emotion in this process whatsoever. It's not like, oh, I feel like the conversation went good, so I'm going to follow up with them. No, 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 no. Did they meet all five? Yes or no? If yes, you proceed. If no, you delete the lead. It's that simple. You want to add anything to that? Yeah, questions. Okay, so I love uh, the micro commitments. So when would it make sense for us to get together and go over blah? And they say, you know, I'm thinking about mid-April, mid-April, great. So when you're when you do reach back out, are you reminding them? Are you saying you said you asked you asked me to reach out to you in April? Ding, so ding, 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 okay. ding. So you're you you're, you're, you're reiterating that back uh, as close to what they said, so that it. It triggers something. Is that oh, correct? Ren, look at you. You know a lot about sales. So we use their words. Okay. We use the, Ren, you told me, and we use exactly what they said because we have it in the notes. Right. You asked me to reach out to you after your son's graduation in May. Ding, 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 ding. We're using the prospect's words. So that's the science behind that. Right. Perfect. That's what I was thinking. I yeah. love it. I love it. Uh, all right, cool. So, so that's how we define the lead. Then we have to move on and say, okay, well, Brandon, Ren, I get it. I understand all of that. You know, when I find somebody who fits the criteria, what do I do next? Right? So let's talk it through. There's only a few outcomes or call dispositions that can come from a, from a prospecting sales conversation. We can call somebody and number one, that can turn into a hot lead. How we define a hot lead in my world is somebody who is willing and able to set a listing appointment this week. So this is all those calls that say, listen, I want to meet with you. I'm just, I got to finish up this meeting. I got to firm it up with the wife. I got to do this, that, or the other thing. That is a hot lead. They want to meet with you. They want to interview you right now. That contact, that lead, Ren, has to be followed up with daily. This has to be touched followed up with called text daily until the appointment is set. That's step number one. That's outcome number one, call disposition number one. The second thing that can occur is you talk with a prospect and they fall under our warm lead category. So when it comes to time frame, they are looking to do something in the next 30, 60, 90 days. Well, what do they do then? Here's what I recommend. This is what I coach to. We're going to call them and follow up with them every Monday. We're going to uh, we're going to send them a piece of we're going to send them a direct mail uh, a piece of direct mail once a week. We're going to text them every single Friday, um, and there's some other things too. But if they just follow those three things with okay. a warm lead, this is any lead that tells you 
I'm doing, I will meet with you in the next 30, 60, 90 days. We call them once a week. I recommend Monday. We send them a piece of direct mail using mailbox power uh, once a week. And then we text them every single Friday. Okay. The next thing that can happen is what we call a seller nurture. So this is anybody who tells you that they're looking to do something that's further out, less than 12 months, right? Maybe this is the, the person who says, yeah, we're going to move, you know, right when school gets out this summer, we're going to move. Okay, cool. That's a seller nurture. So the nurtures, this is the system that they have to follow. They're going to get a phone call every month. They're going to get a direct mail piece every single every month. And we're going to follow that cadence until the day comes where we're ready to set a listing appointment. So the nurtures get called monthly. The warm leads get called weekly. The hot leads get called daily. It's very simple. It's very simple to follow when you follow that format. Uh, and again, they have to have a structure. Again, they that's have right. to have a system. Again, because and, and it's not, uh, and, and that's the challenge. Yeah. Well, and, here's the cool thing. Yeah. You helped us with this because here's what we do with our clients. Mm -hmm. When we, when the, we bring on a coaching client, we set their folders up inside Vulcan 7 mm -hmm. to follow this exact follow-up framework. So when you are done with a prospecting call, the disposition inside Vulcan 7 we're clicking the button and it's putting them in the right folders automatically. We're setting up that automation right inside the Vulcan 7 platform. So then the only thing they have to do is go to work five days a week and then everything will take care of itself. That's exactly right. That's exactly Perfect. right. So that is how we stay organized because That'll you're work. exactly- that, so, that will do it. So many leads are falling through the cracks. So yeah. what we worked with, with Davis on your team, and we're still doing more work, as you know, inside the system to make it so easy for people they make the call, they have the conversation, they click one button and it goes to the right place. Everything's real nice and organized. And that's the way to do it inside the Vulcan 7 system. Nice. So um, the, I think the, 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 the takeaway from today's conversation is just that, you know, you have to look at what we do and pretend like there's, a, there's like this big sales pipeline, Ren. And really what you're doing is you're making initial contacts, figuring out of those initial contacts, who are the leads and who are not. Those people then go into the next step in your sales funnel. Then you're following the follow-up framework that I just outlined, moving them closer down the funnel until a listing appointment is set. That's the visual. That's how I would outline it to an agent who is just overwhelmed with lead follow-up. Those are the frameworks that I would give. Did I miss anything you want to add? No, and that that once it's in the system, once it's moving along the way it's supposed to, then it. What does Pythagoras say? Yeah, follow the road that's best, no matter how rough, and soon it becomes easy and agreeable. So all you have to do is do this for a few days. After a while, it will have a flow. It'll uh, you'll basically you you start putting them in the front, and then uh, a few days later they come out in the um, on the back end, and you list the house, put a sign, lock box. And, Keep on going. That's exactly uh, right. Very and systematic. Very systematic. And you nailed it. You know, we have to, that's the importance of the discipline of daily prospecting to keep people coming in the top. Yeah. So people keep coming out of the bottom of the pipeline. And you follow these right. steps that we've outlined right. today in 30 days. If someone can just stay consistent, we have a 30 day challenge inside of our coaching program. If they can just do this for 30 days, they will come out of that experience with consistent listings for the rest of their career. And that is the big word, Brandon, because most of the people listening that are not involved with you, uh, if, if they really thought about it and they don't have to think very hard, have an inconsistent business. They're That's in right. Spurts. You know, they have three transactions, then a dry spell, and then one, and then a dry spell. And this puts the consistency back in it and gives them a nice steady flow and obviously a, a lot more sales than they would doing it in some something less organized that's right they don't have cash flow they've got cash spurts to your that's point <laughs> they get a bunch of cash i'm rich let's go to the mall and then they don't prospect for 90 days they end up with nothing and they keep going down this vicious cycle of start i know stop, start I know. Stop. oh i got three commission checks and they pay all their bills and then oh darn i'm out <laughs> it's amazing so Hopefully you guys got a lot of tactical advice from today's episode. Like always, I will link to Vulcan 7 if you guys want to get signed up with the most powerful listing lead generation platform in real estate. 
I'll put a link right underneath this video. All you have to do is click it. Ren's team will take great care of you. Tell mm -hmm. them you want the reverse selling dashboard and they'll get you on our dashboard. It's a really, really cool thing. Ren, thank you so much, like always. And uh, we'll see thank everybody. You, yeah, we'll see everybody next week.